Roxanne James is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety, and she joins me now from Ottawa. Roxanne James, on what basis will you appeal the decision to grant Omar Khadr bail? Well, as you know, we're very disappointed with the ruling that uh, came out today. We firmly believe that someone who has committed um, such heinous acts, someone who has been charged with multiple offences and has pled guilty to those offences should actually serve their full time behind uh, bars. Uh, again, we're very disappointed and that is why the Minister of Public Safety did announce today that we will be appealing this decision. To appeal, you must have a legal reason that the judge erred in some way in her decision. What is the basis of that appeal? Well, I'm not going to talk about the basis of the appeal today. Obviously, that will uh, be done in a due uh, time. Do you but know what the to, basis is? But we need to be very clear again on what the charges were that this individual has pled guilty to. This is someone who has uh, was charged and pled guilty to murder, attempted murder, conspiring with Al-Qaeda, uh, providing material support for terrorism, and spying on U.S. forces. So these are not light charges. These are extremely serious charges uh, connected to terrorism. Uh, we also have to remember that um, on the other side of the coin, we have actual victims that are the result of this uh, heinous act committed by uh, Omar uh, Ahmed Qadar. We're talking about the family of Christopher Spear. Of course, uh, First uh, Officer Sergeant Christopher Spear was killed um, in this uh, terrorist attack. His, he left behind a wife, Tabitha, and of course they had two children, Taryn and Tanner, that no longer have a father. Mm. These are the actual victims of this horrible, horrible act of terrorism, and that is why we firmly believe, as our government has always said in the past, we firmly believe that someone who, uh, in this particular case, who is involved in these types of serious um, incidents of crime, terrorism, that they should serve their full sentence behind bars. Okay, it is under appeal now, and that's why the judge actually granted bail and I'm sure you're aware that you can't launch an appeal just because you don't like the decision. There must be something uh, that you believe is inaccurate that the judge made, uh, an accurate uh, move that the judge made in court. So you said you don't want to talk about it today. Is that because you don't know the basis of the appeal yet? As I said, You're I'm not going to, for one. As I said, I'm not going to talk about the basis Why? of the appeal before Why? it's actually um, uh, produced uh, by the government and the lawyers. But what I will say again is our government has been very clear on this, that there are the real victims of this particular crime. It certainly is not Omar Ahmed Qadar. It is the uh, obviously the deceased person in this incident, which is uh, American Army medic Christopher Spear. Again, he's left behind a wife who is now a widow and two lovely children. We also must remember that there were other victims in this incident, of course. You've said, uh, as you've said. Absolutely. Oh, there was another individual who was blinded by these actions. Here, here's what I, you're talking about, of course, uh, Lane. Norris. I want to bring a clip to you, and this is from Dennis Edney, and here is his reaction to hearing that you would appeal this decision and the way that he characterizes what has happened to Omar Cotter. He characterizes him as a 15-year-old child soldier. Let's listen to what he had to say to me in an earlier interview. At the very worst, one could argue, if, assuming he did throw a hanging grenade, which we say he didn't, that he was a child soldier. Canada and the United States spend millions of dollars rehabilitating child soldiers in Sierra Leone. What is it wrong with Omar Khadr? What is it this government, Mr. Harper, has against Omar Khadr? Is it the fact he's a Muslim? Roxanne? Well, that's completely outrageous, of course. Uh, as you know, this individual, he was uh, over in uh, this uh, area. Uh, he's been on a video, uh, obviously, with uh, it was a, it's a well-known video. He was uh, shown uh, with individuals making explosive devices. This is someone who has pled, uh, uh, pled guilty. He has accepted those charges, those five very serious uh, charges. Well, not anymore. This is someone... He has recanted. Uh, and he has uh, recanted said, and said he was tortured, that it was sleep deprived, and he merely wanted to just put the whole thing behind him, and that's why he pled guilty. But again, he's recanting now. Again, we have to take a look at the real victims in this particular situation. The so, real victims of this horrific act of violence are the actual families of the deceased army medic, Christopher Spear, and of course the uh, American uh, who was also blinded in this incident. Mm -hmm. Let us be very clear our government has always fully supported the 
victims of crime. In fact, in 2012, we passed legislation um, which would do uh, just this. It's called the Justice for Victims of Terrorism Act because we believe that the only ones who would receive compensation in incidents like this are the actual victims of these types of crime. But that are, is why, is again, the, we are appealing this decision. Is the government in the habit, though, as it seems to be in this case, of making a decision on the guilt or innocence of an individual before due process is finished? Uh, as you know, uh, there was a uh, process uh, done. This is an individual who, again, has pled guilty to five very serious crimes. Right now, the government of Canada, as you know, is dealing with terrorism uh, here. We ha actually debated C-51 in the House today. But with respect to this individual, this is someone who uh, was actually in uh, that area. He has been shown on video. He has pled guilty to five very serious charges, again, murder, attempted murder, conspiring with al-Qaeda, supporting or uh, providing material support for terrorism, and also spying on U.S. forces. These are not light charges. That is why our government believes that this individual should stay behind bars. Here's what Judge, so you disagree with June Ross, as evidenced by the fact the government will launch an appeal, but you don't know what you're going to appeal yet, uh, on what basis yet, which is interesting. Judge Actually, Ross, what I said is I will not discuss that why, appeal at this time. Why not discuss it? As I said, I'm not going to discuss the appeal at this time. It, it, it is a, uh, not appropriate to do it at this particular time. But again, uh, oh, people, our government has do been it all extremely the clear on this particular case. Oh. We believe that someone who has committed these types of crimes should remain behind bars for the full sentence. That let, is our let, position, and that is what we're appealing. But let me assure you, people come on here all the time, including members of your government, to say we believe that, an, that there could be an appeal based on and they, there is nothing to prevent you from explaining why you believe an appeal is merited. Uh, as I said, we believe an appeal is merited in this situation because this individual but should why? not be out on bail. He has committed serious crimes. He was convicted. He pled guilty to them. But those this are is an not individual for an that appeal. has taken the lives of another individual. Uh, he has blinded another person, and he has left um, a horrific path I understand. of uh, pain and suffering for the family of Christopher Spear. I understand Spear. what you've been and saying, and you've said it multiple times. But I just don't understand why you can't explain to me and to Canadians right now why you believe that you have the basis for an appeal and what that appeal basis is. Well, certainly that uh, will be released shortly. Uh, I'm not in the position to discuss that with you right now. But again, I think that our government has been very clear in this matter. Uh, we recognize who the real victims of this horrific act are. These are the individuals that deserve um, the support of all Canadians. And we firmly believe that someone who has pled guilty to serious crimes, and then such as murder, murder, uh, attempted murder, conspiring with uh, a terrorist organization, Al-Qaeda, uh, providing material support for terrorism, and again, spying on U.S. forces who are one of our closest allies. Uh, we believe firmly that this individual should remain uh, behind bars. We are truly disappointed with the ruling today, and that's why we're appealing the decision. Omar Khadr has also recanted the decision is under appeal in the United States. One of the points that Dennis Edney, his lawyer, makes is that the Supreme Court of Canada has determined that the government of Canada has violated Omar Khadr's rights in a recent decision uh, at Guantanamo Bay that, that defate the Department of Foreign Affairs, sent down interrogators, used that information, passed it on to U.S. Uh, to US U.S. Uh, officials, all the while knowing that he had been subjected to, to lengthy sleep deprivation. This is one of the points he makes when he says the Canadian government has been complicit in what he calls the torture of Omar Khadr. Well, obviously, I disagree with that statement. Uh, right now in Canada, we're dealing with a, a piece of legislation that is, is trying to uh, tackle radicalization, is trying to prevent terror attacks. And we have an individual that has actually followed through on those very same things. And this individual now is seeking bail, uh, was granted. And we believe firmly that someone, again, who has pled guilty and uh, accepted the charges of very, uh, five very serious uh, uh, charges, including murder and attempted murder and terrorism-related uh, offenses, that this individual should not be out on bail, that this individual should remain behind bars. But again, th those aren't actually legal bases. Those aren't technically legal bases for an appeal. Uh, Judge June Ross, in her decision, says he met all of the requirements for bail. One, uh, that there's no issue of public safety. And two, the appeal he is launching in the United States is not frivolous.
What's your reaction to what she had to say? Well, when we talk about public safety, we're dealing with an individual who has accepted and pled guilty to serious charges, charges involving terrorism. Uh, right now in Canada, we're trying to prevent these very same individuals uh, from traveling overseas. This is someone who actually traveled overseas. This is someone who has accepted the charges, has pled guilty to them. At 15. We believe, we believe that is in the best interest of Canadians, and we also firmly believe that this individual should remain behind bars for the uh, duration of his sentence, and that he should not be released on bail. We're very disappointed with this decision that was made today, and again, that's why we're going to appeal it. Judge Ross says he has 12 and a half year track record as a model prisoner, a release plan that's supported by educators, mental health professionals, and his lawyer. On the point of the success of his appeal, which was the second point in determining bail, is this appeal frivolous? She determined it was not. Expert evidence uh, suggested that Cotter has a strong prospect of success of his appeal in the United States. Does that not sway you? Uh, we've been very clear on this particular situation. Uh, we believe that he should remain uh, behind bars. Um, that there is an issue that is we're very concerned about. Obviously, uh, he, uh, someone who, uh, you know, pleads guilty that is uh, for charges such as murder, attempted murder, conspiring with Al Qaeda, again a terrorist organization, a terrorist entity. These are very serious charges. This individual should not be out on bail. We believe that he should remain behind bars for the duration of his sentence. And I think most Canadians would agree with that statement, especially when we're seeing some of the uh, incidents around the world and as you know what has happened here in Canada as well. But let me be clear, our government has fully supported the victims of crime, the real victims of crime, and the real victims of uh, serious actions uh, that Omar Ahmed Qatar has pled guilty to. What about judicial due process? Do you support that? Well, the judicial system uh, is uh, responsible for reviewing the evidence. That is why our government is obviously appealing the decision. It is our right, and we've made, made that decision to, to go forward with that appeal. All right. We don't know the basis of it yet. We look forward to hearing those details soon. Roxanne James, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety.